What's up, crew? Last month, we spent $460,000 on paid advertising. A lot of different ways you can grow your business, but I got to tell you, one of the most controllable ways to do it is learning and mastering the art of paid advertising. It's how we grew our business from zero to 60 in warp speed. And a lot of people are telling you that they can teach you how to do paid ads, but we actually do it month in and month out. And we've put together this fantastic product. And our lead media buyer goes into detail about how we place media, how we write advertising, what images we use, how we do targeting. It's extraordinary. And it's very, very, very affordable. If you want to grow your business faster, go to trafficandfunnels.com slash workshop. One word, trafficandfunnels.com slash workshop. Let us teach you how we do it. And you'll get some good lessons to implement in your business as well. Check it out. You're listening to the Traffic and Funnel Show, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, and conversions. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. Today, let's talk about stress. Grab your notebooks. And get ready to take some notes. I'm just going to prattle off for a little bit about stress and stress's role in your business, stress's role in your life. This came out of a training that we have done with our salespeople. In July was a weird month for us. We came off of, let me just tell you, in January, we set a corporate record. In February, we set a company record. In March, we set a company record. In April, we didn't. In May, we set a company record. In June, we set a company record. In July, we did it. And when you have that sort of track record, the months where you are not advancing can be very painful. How many of you feel like maybe you've been doing the right things for some amount of time, but your life is just not moving forward to the degree that you were told that it would? Maybe you look around and you don't feel like you, you feel like your effort is disproportionate to the amount of income or fulfillment or impact you are enjoying in your career. You're not the only one. You're in a good place when you feel the familiar onset of frustration. Studies on stress reveal that if stress is actually one of the most damaging ingredients uh, to your body. You go out and uh, you study a little bit of uh, the damaging effects of stress. It slows your central nervous system down It damages your biology. It literally slows down the blood flow through your veins. Stress is such a a damaging thing that they actually say that, you know, it's actually indicative of, you know, out in Japan, there are people who are dying young because of an overdose of cortisol in their bloodstream. And cortisol comes from stress. You guys know of people who just walk around, they're stressed out all the time, constantly stressed. You watch those people and they age faster than the rest of the population. Here's what's crazy, though, is studies also reveal that stress can be the most effective stimulant to high performance. It induces growth in your musculature. It actually stretches and enlarges your mental bandwidth. It gets your body into flow. And ultimately, stress can teach you how to have speed and explosive energy. Here's the problem. Stress can be a good thing. It can literally kill you. And it can also be a good thing. It can be a high performance booster. If it's so damaging, how can it be so helpful? And if it is so helpful, how can it be so damaging? It's both at the same time. What do you guys think makes up the difference between those who are killed by stress versus those who are empowered by stress? So there's a great book on this called The Upside of Stress. And they basically go through and they hunt down these people and they, they, uh, you know, they use the scientific way to actually identify there is a difference between it's, it's an actual issue of somebody's belief about stress that changes stress at a structural level. And here's the the difference between whether stress is a sedative for you and it basically knocks you out versus stress being a stimulant and a growth hormone for you. The secret is how you view stress. It's actually how you view it, how you look at it. If you see stress as a negative 
ingredient, then you will experience damaging side effects in stress and pressure. If you view stress as a positive ingredient, then you will actually experience the byproducts of stress as a stimulant. It's how you look at it. Like most things in your life, you can actually control it if you can control the lens through which you view it. Let's say it again, because this actually is bigger than just stress, but it's like everything else in your life, you can control it if you can control the lens through which uh, you view it. Happens all the time, people come in here and they start getting all stressed out and confused and overwhelmed and frustrated and upset because they feel like their lives are so hard. But if you can actually learn to control the angle from which you look at it, you realize that one of the most powerful things you can do for your life is to put yourself into situations that stress you the hell out so that you can actually induce this growth hormone into your life and into your business. I've been here myself. I've seen myself pendulum swing from, you know, one side to the other. At times you can ask my team where stress just tends to numb, numb me out and it sedates me and it kind of makes me shut down and I'm just tired of feeling and I'm tired of treading water. It's like, whatever, we've all been there. Other times I feel electrified by it. The more pressure, the more I'm ready to take on the world. Something will happen and I'll go all in and I'll just be ready to literally destroy whatever it is that is in my way. And I'll be so motivated to rise to the occasion. And here's the thing that you got to understand. The human mind can tolerate almost anything. Sometimes I see emails in support where I'm not supposed to do this, but sometimes I'll go into support and I'll see emails and it's just people moaning and bitching about how life is hard and I just can't handle it. It's like, what are you going to do? And what are you going to do when like one more thing breaks? You're going to get out of the game, go work at Starbucks. It's unbelievable how much credit and control we give to the things that happen to us without realizing that, man, we can really take anything on. We can withstand pretty much anything if we can control the angle and the lens through which we view it. Just saying. Creeping on the support emails. That's me. That is me. How many of you on the call feel like you have been allowing your view of stress to control you rather than controlling the way you view stress to get power from it? I don't know if you guys go back and you look at um, old Mindset Mondays, but as I was kind of thinking about what I was going to talk about today, I went back through some of my journals from 2018. And 2018 was a very hard year. It was a very hard year for us. Um, we doubled, we doubled the staff. We lost a lot of good people because we were bad leaders. I'm talking about team members, like staff members. We had a, uh, a group of clients that literally took m almost everything in CK and kind of copied it, started competing with us at one point. And I think it was the end of March, we had talked about, this is just me being honest with you. Like I said, I want to cut the crap and be real. At one point at the end of March, we had talked about me and Chris, we had talked about maybe not doing traffic and funnels anymore and whether we wanted to keep growing the business. We had some issues in how we were leading. You know, we, if you look up and you're just chronically dealing with the problem once, and dealing with the stress that comes from a problem to solve it the first time, that's no big deal. You just got to stop being a baby. You need to grow up and allow yourself to go through the pain and you need to just become an adult and deal with it. But going through the stress of solving the same problem over and over and over typically indicates that you're doing something wrong. This is where me and Chris were. We had been kind of solving the same problems for like eight months. And a point came in March where you know, some, some clients abdicated and started competing with us. Then we had a, we lost a group of employees all around the same time. And then sales were down. Peyton Welch remembers this. He was here. He's probably the only salesperson. He was there here during this time. 
and he's listening to this call right now. He's supposed to be on vacation, but hey. Uh, and then we ended up getting a letter. Is this too is this too honest for you? Because I can just pop us back into the clouds and fairy dust if you want. I'm just trying to tell you that I, when I talk about stress and weaponizing stress and stress as a stimulant, I understand the game. I've been there and I've had to make my own choices. So I'm just trying to give you that runway and that insight. We got a letter from the Department of Justice basically uh, saying that we had harmed a client from two years ago, like 2016. And getting a letter from the Department of Justice is a scary thing. And this is all happening within 40 days. And we've already talked about throwing in the towel. We've already talked about, well, whether we want to do this or not. It's too hard. Tired of losing employees. Tired of, you know, kind of going all in for clients and then them taking our stuff and competing with us and blah, blah, blah. If you go back and you look at my posts from the, from the time back then, they were just, they were so more focused on me. They weren't focused on other people. And then we actually had one of our old employees called us and um, he said, Hey, this attorney just called me and uh, there's a group of clients. It's the same group of clients that were selling a product competing with us. Like there's a group of clients who are calling old clients and they're trying to put together a class action lawsuit. You guys have been in here. You like, you see the caliber we take care of people. We've been taking care of people for four years, Chris, longer than that. We had this group of clients and they wanted to, to sell to our market and they were trying to call old clients and put together a class action. And we were just like, what in the freaking world? We had a decision to make. What view were we going to look at the stress from? We're going to let this become something that broke us down and slowly took us out of the game or were we going to actually rise up underneath the pressure, convert that pressure into power. That's what I'm telling you guys about the mental game of business. People sometimes get in here and they're making, they think they're making a lot of money, 60 grand a month, 70 grand a month. And I'm like, we made that last Monday. First of all, it's not that much money. And we advise them to get on mindset Monday. It's like, I don't need mindset. How stupid can you become that you feel like you don't need mindset work anymore. We have been through all of the challenges in business. And I can tell you, we had some good people in our corner that were able to re reconfigure how we were thinking about pressure. We had guys like Jay Abraham who's able to tell us, Hey, this is how you're thinking. And you need to change how you're thinking. You're never going to outgrow this responsibility to control the way and the lens that you look through to view the world. It's never going to happen. doesn't matter how much money you come into. It doesn't matter how much your business grows. Talking with one of our elite clients did $900,000 last month in revenue, had some big issues come up with this team and his business. You're never going to outgrow the way you think you're never going to have to outgrow the taking of your medicine. Anyways, fast forward, we got some great advice and some great coaching and we just made a decision that we were going to deal with problems once and pull out the lessons. And we were going to basically, uh, we were going to start looking at the problems in our business as empowering tools rather than things we had to run from. Ray Dalio says that like, if you can learn to think about problems in your business, like coals on the train, like on an old school train, and each time you solve a problem, it's like a coal that is thrown into the fire that converts into power. And we started looking at problems this way. And uh, there's three lessons that I can basically pull out of the last year and a half, not only in our business, but in helping clients deal with their own problems in their business. And I want to teach you those three points today, how to keep stress as a stimulant rather than a sedative. So you can write this down, three keys to weaponizing stress. By the way, everything was fine. No class action lawsuit was ever filed. Half of them came back and apologized. And we loosely still have relationships with a lot of those people today. We just decided to handle it the right way. Three keys to weaponizing stress. Number one, first key to weaponizing stress, disconnect from other people's barometer of success. Number one, 
You want to be able to weaponize the stress in your life rather than being crushed by it. You are going to have to disconnect yourself from anybody else's picture of success but your own. Why is this the key? Because most of the people that I see in this group, your actual source of stress is you comparing yourself to other people's version of success. You have no business comparing your wins to the wins of other people. On one hand, I see people who are like, well, this person is doing 80 K a month and I just got my first console and I suck. And, uh, I'm not going to post anything about that. And on the other hand, I see people who are like, well, I do 70 grand a month. And most of these people are just getting their first consult. It's time to reset our definition of success. It's time to reset our definition of progress. I just handle both of these individual cases for a minute. You realize that everyone who came in here started probably way poorer than you are now. The first hurdle you have to get over, if you're going to actually learn to use the environment here, the first hurdle you have to get over is thinking that this is a competition. Thinking that somehow you having less revenue than somebody else degrades or minimizes your ability to win at the very beginning of the run. That's the first thing. The second type of person is comparing backwards. Oh, I do 80 grand a month. Oh, I do 100 grand a month. I already do 50 grand a month. And these people are getting their first consoles. You realize that I have staff, staff that are making more money than you are at 60 grand a month. I've had two people in the last 30 days quit their businesses to come work for me. One was doing $70,000 a month. He's making more money working for me than he was doing his own thing. This is something that I think is poisonous when people come in and on both sides of the equation, people begin to compare and they begin to judge and they begin to look at other people and they begin to place themselves inside of their grid that they've made up about how far along they are versus how far along everyone else is. I'm telling you that this is okay to do when you're 12. It's okay to do when you're four. It's okay when you go to little league baseball. It's not okay as an adult. It's not okay if you want to leave a legacy. It's not okay if you want to have long-term impact. It's time to grow up. Because what happens is that becomes now a new standard that you set for yourself. Let me connect this back into stress. This becomes a new standard that you set for yourself. No longer do you have income goals. No longer do you have impact goals. Now your goals are subconsciously wired simply to be everybody else. You don't care how much money you're doing. You just don't want to be second, third, fourth place. That is not how you build a legacy business. Disconnect, how to use stress as a stimulant. First of all, you can't be judging and making your definition of success predicated on somebody else's definition. Number two, number dose. Think, what can this teach me? What can this teach me? There's probably no other question that I have repeated to myself more than this question. What can this teach me? What can I learn from this? You see, uh, if, if you come into the offices and you see us in a meeting, Chris and I, we're always asking this, what, what can we learn from what happens? We did a, um, I don't know if you guys remember this. We did the uh, 30 day sales challenge. Did it last month or two months ago. It didn't really work. It didn't do the way it, it didn't do what we thought it was going to do. I think you guys get this idea of us that we just go into a room, have a stroke of, Mozart brilliance come out, have the team implement it all and make millions of dollars. And it doesn't work that way. We're always testing things and things are always not working and breaking. And, and, uh, this didn't work. <laughs> it just didn't work. Like we thought it was going to work a certain way and it didn't. And I remember a meeting we had after that. And we just, we literally put it on everyone's calendar. We met for an hour and the whole theme of the meeting was what can we learn from this. 
this might be the easiest way to tell the difference between a high performer and a mediocre performer is, is your initial gut reaction to think why, or is your initial gut reaction to think, what can I learn from this? What can this teach me? How can this make me stronger? Problems teach you how to dig deep below the surface. They teach you how to mine deep. What can this teach me? What can I learn from this? And the third thing, this kind of leads into the third thing, acknowledge the point of the game. You want to really learn to use stress as a weapon, not only in your business, but in your life, in your big dreams, in whatever goals you have, physical, monetary, relational. Acknowledge the point of the game. And uh, I want to propose to you today that the point of the game, whatever it is that you play, whether you are a weightlifter, whether you are a professional tennis player, whether you are just a basketball player and you play for fun, the point of the game is to find and overcome worthy opponents. Emphasis on worthy. There's nothing better than watching, you know, did you guys... David, did you see the Wimbledon championship a few weeks ago? It's the longest Wimbledon match in history. Two athletes at the very height of their game, absolutely worthy of one another. There's great honor in a victory when facing a worthy opponent. There is very little honor when victory is handed to you or when you take victory from a weak or a tired opponent. How fun is it? for you to go play tennis against somebody who has never hit the ball before and just destroy them. My concern, my concern in the game today, my concern in the, in the game of business, whatever it is you're building is that if you are not experiencing stress, fatigue at times, failure, if you aren't experiencing what it's like to lose now and again, maybe a little bit of burnout, maybe a little bit of exhaustion, then what that means for you is that the task at hand is not worthy of you. It's not worthy of you because if you go out and you get on the court and you be, you, you become in, enthralled in the game and you get lost in flow, your body is going to hurt. You're going to experience fatigue. You're going to experience maybe a couple losses. I'm telling you, if you don't feel pulled just a bit beyond where you're comfortable, then whatever you're trying to build is not worth it to you. It's not worth it. Only in pain do we experience growth. Only when we face resistance do we actually have the right ingredients to level up and ascend. Number three is you have to acknowledge that the point of the game is to struggle. You've probably never thought of struggle as a good thing before. But isn't that the point of the game? When you get in and you begin to row, isn't the point of it to struggle against a worthy opponent and in the end become victorious? Not because it was easy, but because you wanted it and you fought for it. You're going to have to learn to look at your business. Your business is the greatest game. It's the greatest game that there is building a business. And the point of the game is to struggle. The point of the game is to find setbacks and deal with them. Don't be that person who, instead of taking setbacks, setbacks as they come and using stress as a stimulant, you just wish that it would be easier. You wish that it would go away. The point of the game is to struggle. Number one, disconnect from other people's barometer of success. Number two, think, what can this teach me? What can this teach me? Number three, acknowledge the point of the game, which is to struggle. But most importantly, it's to struggle well, struggle the right way. Struggle in a way that is honorable, not in a way that is cheap. Hey, what if you could be in the boardroom where we sit around and we plan out how we're going to grow our eight-figure company month in and month out. If you've ever wondered how traffic and funnels grew so quickly, there are strategies, there are formulas that you can model in your business that our clients are modeling to scale to the moon and back. This is an amazing program. It's called Insider's Access Monthly, and we've put together a couple words on a page that you can actually go and check out this offer, trafficandfunnels.com slash IAM. You will not be sorry, I promise you. Let me know what you think.